welcome to a little series within a series called Let's Talk. That will be a part of my Throwback Thursday series. In today's video, I will talk about Jormungandr, my first coaster uploaded to the workshop that I made for Channel 5 Gaming's second Exploration Coaster Contest. I'll share what I liked about this creation, what I didn't like about this creation, and some thought processes of what went into this creation. So stay tuned. So while I have a POV of my very first coaster made, The Pits of Doom, on my channel, I won't be starting or doing a video on that coaster in the series as I deleted that park. It was that cringy. <laughs> I have that coaster on my channel to show the evolution of my plan code journey. And if you're depressed, you know, to make you smile and laugh at the hilarity of that. But other than that, that, you know, I'm not going to go much into that first coaster. So that being said, next up in my coaster journey is this one, Jormungandr. So let's take a look at it on the workshop timeline. have a POV of Jormungandr and I will link that video at the end of this one if you haven't seen it before. There's also two videos from Channel 5 featuring this in the contest that's on my playlist if you want to see that too. Don't ask me where I'm going with my camera. <laughs> I can't, oh my gosh, I can't scroll and talk at the same time. How do these guys do it? Okay, anyhow. It's kind of loud right here, isn't it? Let's go somewhere quiet. <laughs> Alrighty. So I got Planet Coaster back in late September 2018. I jumped in and started going ham with Pits of Doom, relying on the workshop for everything except making a really cringy terraformed skull that looked like an ape. In October, without having made anything of my own, I confidently entered Channel 5's World Fair Shop Contest with Benjor at my, as my contest entry. That was my first creation ever in the game. After that contest and during the holidays, I continued working on Pits of Doom, playing around on another cringy map. In January 2019, Channel 5 announced the second Exploration Coaster Contest, and again, without knowing anything, I confidently entered the contest. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you see a pattern here? <laughs> Honestly though, contests and challenges really hype our Planko community up and it creates a really cool hype buzz in the servers. For a lot of creators, contests and challenges give creators parameters to stay within and that gives them the fuel they need to create some mind-blowing creations. It was fun to be a part of that contest. I went back to the first Exploration Coaster contest and watched it all to see what was already made as I wanted to create something different. An insight into me, one of the many reasons why I love Planet Coaster is because you can create and you can create and theme rides, parks, etc. that you really can't uh, that you really can't see and do in real life due to a due to a variety of reasons. This game allows you to unleash your creativity and creating fun, unique experiences. One of the things about real life theme parks and rides is that you spend a lot of time waiting in lines, queues to ride maybe a three minute, you know, give or take ride. So as I played in Planko, I created rides that would give my guests a ride worth waiting for. <laughs> so other than Benjur, I hadn't really done a lot of making my own blueprints. So as with Pits of Doom, I relied heavily on the workshop. 
but I did make some things, but more of that in a bit. Before I go into my likes and dislikes about this creation, let me give you a few cool details about the Norse mythological Jormungandr. All right, some cool facts about Jormungandr, if y'all didn't know. He is also known as the Midgard Serpent or World Serpent, a prominent Norse, a prominent figure in the Norse mythology. Some fun facts about him is that he's one of three children of the trickster god Loki and the giantess, I'm not even going to try and pronounce her name, Size. According to Norse mythology, Jormungandr is so enormous that it encircles the entire world. It is often described as being so long that it can wrap itself around the earth and still have its head and tail meet. Okay, I'm going to try and pronounce this name. Ouroboros symbolism. Oh, okay, I know what that is. Let me zoom up here. Whoop. This symbol right here is the it's the image of the serpent or dragon eating its own tail, known as the Ouroboros. It is often associated with Jormungandr, and this symbolizes the eternal cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Yeah, when I was looking, when I finally decided on Jormungandr, I was uh, doing some research and the game God of War came out with Jormungandr and I had seen clips of Jormungandr. Maybe I'd just seen the clips of Jormungandr from that game and how the characters, the father and son, you know, call him or and uh, I'm just, I, I, I see that clip and it's so imposing. It's crazy. I crap myself. Oh, it's huge. All right. So with these points in mind, I had actually created the coaster layout before coming up with a name and theme and researching a variety of creatures and water gods. Jormungandr really resonated with me for this exploration coaster. And after reading all of these cool facts about Jormungandr, I hope you can understand why I did. Once I decided on that, then I went on to theming. All right, let's go on to what I liked about this creation and what I didn't like about this creation. First, the likes. The first thing I really liked about this creation that I made is the queue and exit theming. From the area before the queue begins where the guests can purchase appropriate apparel for the ride because you will get wet. It is an underwater ride. So here you can get swimsuits. And then you can go in here. Oop, not in there. You can come in here to the bathroom and change your clothes. Look at all these people wanting to go on Jormungandr. Yeah, they say the ride isn't rideable. Bah, it is. <laughs> but okay. Um, but yeah, to the... I like uh, the theming there to the puns of Captain Lockjaw and being entertained by a motley crew of pirates. Oh, and I forgot I even had Captain Lockjaw right here too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so, and then what I really also liked too is, so I have this. I made that sign. Originally, I was going to have this all in basic shapes and I ran out of time. I think we had about a month for this contest. Yeah, it was right, like right, like the 1st of January and it ended like two days after my birthday. So I was like, uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, what I also like is walking through the whalebone arches. I thought this was a really cool effect and getting a glimpse of the sleeping Norman Gander. I feel that the queue really sets the tone of the ride being underwater. What do y'all think? Next up, what I really liked about... The second thing I really liked about this creation is the terraforming. Particularly, we're going to go down here, the sea serpent. I terraformed this and the coaster will weave through it. I can remember like pausing, pausing and stopping this so many times and making sure that you weren't going through the terraforming and having clipped, you know, be having it be clipped. So I terraformed the sea serpent. Oh, I think we actually see it go through here too. I don't know where the coaster is on this. No, I think we're, okay, I hear it, but oh well. So I like the serpent. 
And then I also like this area, the, the terraforming of the coral reef area. I had terraformed all of this and I thought it looked really cool. Originally, I kind of wanted to have some of the coaster layout kind of go through here and it didn't kind of work out, but I really like the terraformed area of this. <clears throat> so these are, this is some of my favorite terraforming area. <clears throat> Excuse me. Third, while I didn't make very many blueprints, I did make, and I'm proud of, my submarine. My dolphins. I'm proud of these guys. Aren't they cute? My my jellyfish. And I made a right a wide variety of jellyfish. My octop my octopi. <laughs> Look at that face. Yeah, I had fun just kind of creating some fun, unique octopuses. Yeah, I like this one. Isn't he cute? I made some sea snails and some lobsters. Oh yeah, I made my, my I did a, a, an animated, well, I did an, a non-animated lobster. Whoop. Camera, work with me. Here's this cutie. And then I made an animated one. Haha. <laughs> so yeah, these are, I'm proud of these things these basic shapes that I had created characters and all and it's cool because the fact that just some fun facts Red Dragon went on to use my octopi in an adorable flat ride for a Spongebob collab in Dragon Slayer and you will find the dolphins, lobsters, octopi and jellyfish and sea snails and various versions of the coral rocks in the flat ride Christmas Under the Sea that was my first video in my Throwback Thursday series this last December. Also, for the record, these dolphins aren't fat, F-A-T, but fat, P-H-A-T. <laughs> Fourth, I really liked the second lift hill. It looks so pretty with the lighting and the foliage with the moon above. I think, and I know I took some cinematics of it. There we go. This exploration coaster was ambitious considering all the things I didn't know about the game. I was still homeschooling my son at the time, so after school, errands and dinner, I'd work on this until late or early in the morning. Luckily, I had a week of winter holiday break before resuming the schoolwork to really binge on this. However, towards the end of the contest, I was struggling with theming and I had a really bad migraine, like about maybe two or three days before the contest ended. As I was recuperating from my migraine, I was watching some YouTube videos and saw Tricky Plays Games Reptile Coaster. The lift hill on this coaster it was the inspiration I needed for this lift hill, and it is inspired from Tricky's Reptile Coaster, using very similar foliage and rocks. Last, I like the idea, concept that I came up with doing an underwater coaster and executing it to the best of my abilities at the time. While a fellow contestant and I weren't the first ones to create an underwater coaster ride, that belongs to Brad Hamilton, and since the Exploration Coaster Contest, many other creators such as Gaussian, Wormgar, Darks, Tommy T, Denise Babis, Danny Chiggins, and Silex have all gone on to create even more extraordinary ones as well. But for the time, I'm really, I'm really proud of this. All right, now on to what I didn't like about this creation. The first is the overall coaster design and layout. While there are elements like the triple loops that come out of the water and look serpentine, there was zero banking and smoothness. I literally hit smooth once, and just for those that don't know, like, they don't play this game, so if you're editing, ah, like, there's this little ed edit button right here, and I, I don't want to have to stop this and well, actually, it's just, it doesn't matter. Okay, so right here, you can see 
smooth all, smooth banking, smooth height, smooth turn. I literally hit that once and thought, ta-da, the whole entire layout is smooth. Because it says smooth all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Now the right breaks down. So, anyhow, yeah, it was silly me thinking that would smooth the whole entire track, but I didn't know. And at this time, I had no idea what banking even meant. Like, I'll go ride coasters in real life, but I, I don't know any of that jargon and nuances about coasters. I just, all I know about coasters is I like to ride them. Plain and simple. Aw, you poor people. What's going on? <laughs> me. Oh, I think I paused the game. Ha! <laughs> That's, okay, there we go. Go fix this ride, y'all. All right. But yes, I'm very ignorant to the mechanics and facts about coasters. Or I was. Well, I still, honestly, I know a little bit more. But not like I couldn't, I couldn't hold a conversation and chat about all the different kinds of coasters. And, you know, what, they're, what they should do and all that kind of stuff. All right. Second thing that I didn't like is that I used images for as scenery in this experience. And I'll show you like you zoom through here quite fast on a lot of these but oh come on where are they where are you images okay here we go so yeah so I use images that you see I tried to incorporate them like that's okay that's kind of cool blending it in but a lot of the animals that I could make myself and yeah. And then for the contest, for the coaster contest. Oh, where's the giant? I had a giant a sea creature. There we go. Yeah, the problem with images and using images for creations like this. I know other creators have been able to manage it and stuff, and you can put them all in a zip file, and, and then people just go and to the Google Drive and unzip it and put it in. But you know, I know I'm guilty of not putting in images a lot of times as well. But for the contest, if you look at the contest submission or spotlight of this creation, uh, it did load in. Johnny had problems with it. And so you zoom it and you, this was blank, like how you just saw it here. And that was unfortunate um, that it didn't load properly. And because of this, well, you know, a positive thing, even though... You know, I'm bummed out that I had to rely on images for theming in this coaster. One of the positive things is that it led me to using custom-made uh, TMTK, or as what we call, you know, it's, it's Theme Maker Toolkit items for future contests and projects. And I'm very shy about using images on the screens to this day. I think I only used images in Inside Out for the uh, for the three ATMs that I skinned and that was it I, I tried to avoid using images at all costs um, oh yeah and I used it for um, my beer gardens that you'll see uh, but yeah that's it um, so yeah and then also while we're talking about theming and using you know what I didn't like can I just say <laughs> wait we'll, we'll find it Whoa! Here we go. Like, what the, f what the hell was I thinking? Having a hippo on the ocean. <laughs> I don't know what I was. Definitely, it was filler stuff. And then, hang on, we ain't, we ain't done. <laughs> like, oh wait, was it here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Okay, so yeah, I used this too as this was supposed to be like the jet stream where all the fish. If you'd seen like Finding Nemo and they um is it the jet stream or that the wave the you know the giant wave that goes in the ocean the giant current oh gosh i'm gonna have to google and put that in here but this is what this was simulating kind of cool but yeah you can see my oh i'm kind of embarrassed okay anyhow moving on let me find since we're talking about what was i thinking here oh not there hang on bear with me y'all is it? Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking having manatees? 
in the ocean. <laughs> I was just finding random sea creature images to put in there. Uh, yeah, so I, I cringe at that. Totally cringe. Alright, the third thing that I didn't like about this creation was having to lift hills. So, while I talked about this is one of my favorite lift hills, um, ideally, in a perfect exploration coaster, it needs only one lift hill to generate the height and momentum to carry your coaster all the way around the map and get you back into the coaster station again. And so starting off with here, I thought it was a cool thing because I hadn't seen, I truly hadn't seen up to this point, a coaster that instead of just going immediately, most coasters go up, start just going up the lift hill. Once you get on it, when once you leave the, the train station, maybe sometimes they'll go like a little down and do a loop-de-loo or kind of curve, but they eventually, they immediately start going up to get that momentum. But for us in Jormungandr, we take the plunge straight down. And this, just going straight down fast, it gets you the momentum to go all the way over here. But by here, you definitely need the momentum to get your happy butt back into the coaster station. So this is my first lift hill. And honestly, I'm like, this is cringe. This is totally cringe for me. Only because it's like, what the hell, what the F do these tunnels and hot air balloons have to do with Jormungandr or even anything Norse for that matter? It truly was just, it was filler. I'll, I'll own it. I mean, it just goes nothing with, with the theme. And I'm really like, so I don't like this. I don't like how I themed this, this lift hill. Ideally, if I had more time and when I was thinking about redoing this again, I was thinking about having the rainbow bridge, like a giant rainbow up here. But yeah, I'm kind of like, nah, I'm not feeling it. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to redo this ride. It is what it is. I've got other ideas that I want to execute. I do like this drop and you come down here and you see these Viking ships yeah but okay so yeah having two lift hills I, I, I'm really bummed out that I had to use two lift hills to get back in there and then talking about this while I liked my second lift hill so technically, the lift hill, if you have a second lift hill in your exploration coaster, it's basically to get you back into the coaster station. So these poor guests, after riding the, 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 the coaster of death, they're thinking, oh, we're going to go back into the coaster station. Nope. They take another plunge. <laughs> and then do some weird-ass zigzagging through here. Yeah, so, I, yeah, this wasn't one of my finer things that I liked about this creation. <laughs> Alright, next that I didn't like about this creation is the weird water layers. So, here, we'll go from here. So, okay, here, perfect example. So, here is, okay, this is the water, and now we're between... There's water here, and then there's water here. See, there's two layers of water, and then there's like, oh, is there another third layer? Yeah, there's three layers of water. So it's like, I don't know. Um, I know in the comments, you know, some of the comments people are like, oh, what's up with the water things? And I don't know how I did, I don't even know how I did that, to be honest with you. If I could explain what I did to get that, and it's kind of weird here too, because as you're going up this, again, this wonderful work of art lift hill, we have this, we come out here, boom, but we're still underwater, boom, we're still underwater, boom, now we're finally out of the water. <laughs> so I don't like the weird water layers that this created. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I, I don't understand that. So I don't like that. <laughs> but yeah, it kind of broke some of the immersion in some of the areas. Oh yeah, for example, I think it broke the immersion of being underwater and yet dolphins are... 
dolphins are all swimming on top of the water, underneath the water. Yeah, don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, okay. And last, the theming. It wasn't as cohesive as it could have been, and parts really didn't make sense looking back at this. To be honest, I was filling areas in and putting cool water-themed decor where you see it from the coaster. Um, like I said, number, you know, my dislike number three, I had hot air balloons and tunnels going up the lift hill, hippos underwater, I had dolphins down way below where they would normally swim. So yeah, it wasn't as cohesive as I would like it to have been. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Riding from the coaster, you don't really see it. You see this area really quick before I move on. Since Jormungandr was a Norse, you know, mythology thing, I thought, well, you really don't see jack shit from the coaster ride. It's going so bloody fast. You might see little glimpses at the top of this coaster station, but not much. <laughs> but when you come into the area, you know, into the park, and you're walking down the queue, you see this little area, this little encampment, and this is a, a Norse little village. I didn't, I did not make any of these blueprints. I want to say, ooh, I, I can't off the top of my head. Ah, I want to say Stale Blitz, Matt Yorshin. I, I had them all, I have all the people that I use for blueprints and the links to them on my description page on for this creation so if you're interested just go to my page on the workshop and, and check it out for links to all of that but I thought it added some nice ambiance for the brief time that you do see it from the coaster some cool Viking creations and these dope Viking ships are freaking amazing yeah but yeah so those are my likes and dislikes in closing, while Jormungandr's third place finish was a significant achievement for me, there were other deserving creators in my bracket that should have been in a third place spot, and I feel really bad about that, about this fact. Jormungandr may not be perfect, but it's a testament to my creativity and my enthusiasm for just diving into these events. I also sincerely appreciate all the love and encouragement I received from my family and community members on this creation. It gave me the confidence to go on to participate in the blueprint shuffles and making more of my own creations. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. What parts of the coaster were your favorites or dislikes? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for taking time to tune in and watch the video. I appreciate your interest and support of my channel. It means a lot to me. Until next video, peace, love, and blessed be. Bye, y'all.